Today we're going to be doing the second in a series of videos about working with our new product. The Core HL7 Microsoft SQL Schema Engine. During this video we will, download the software. Install the software. Activate the software with a free demo license. And then configure the software and database to receive HL7 messages. And that's only going to take us about 2 to 3 minutes. After we've done that, we're going to import a few hundred HL7 messages into our database and have a look at the results. Let's get started. Our journey starts here on our website, www.transworldscribe.com. From the home page, just click Downloads in the menu to go to the Downloads area. Here on the Downloads page, find the Core MS SQL Schema Engine, and click the Download link. I've already downloaded the software so I'm just going to open my downloads. Double-click the installation file and then follow the prompts to just install it to the default folder. After the software is installed, you'll see this shortcut on your desktop. What we have to do next is activate the software with a license so that we can use it. This is really simple. Just double-click the shortcut to start the program. Then accept the end user license agreement and voila! We're ready to activate our license. You will need to have an account with us to do this, so just make sure that while you're on our website, www.transworldscribe.com, you create your account if you don't already have one. To activate, all you have to do is enter your customer ID, that's your email address, and your password. Then click the activate button and wait for the response from our web server. This can take a few seconds so just be patient. And just like that, we are ready to start working with the Core HL7 Microsoft SQL Schema Engine. Our next step, will be to create a schema profile to connect to our SQL Server database. Now, we assume that since you're watching this video, you have at least a basic understanding of Microsoft SQL Server, because it's not intended as an instructional video of how to use Management Studio, or what a SQL Server is, etc, etc, etc. With all of that being said, what we need to do next is create a database for us to play in, or, if you already have a database created you can use it. We can always use the software to clean everything up when we're done. As you can see, I already have a database named Core HL7 which we will use. It's completely empty, and has no tables or data. In a minute, we're going to need to enter the name of our SQL Server. So, while I'm here, I'm just going to copy it out to the clipboard really quick. And back in our software, I'm going to click New Schema Profile to get started. Before I forget, let me just paste in the name of the server. And if you recall, our database name, Core HL7. Now I can get started with my schema profile in the first section, Part 1. If you watch the first video in this series, you will remember that to create the database schema we need three things. 1. A connection to a SQL database. 2. A schema prefix. And 3. A HL7 definition, but that's in the next section, part 2, and we'll get to that in a moment. First, I'm going to enter a name for this profile. I'm just going to use profile number 1. The name can be whatever you like, it just can't conflict with any other profile name and I'll add the schema prefix. This is a 2-4 to four character value that the software will use when naming database objects. I'm going to use AAA. For the rest of part 1, I'm just going to leave the default values in place, with one small exception. I'm going to change the security protocol to use trusted connection. Normally, you wouldn't do this in a production environment, there you would want to use a SQL Server user ID and password. Next, I'm going to make sure everything is working so far by testing my connection to the database. Okay. So far, so good. Let's move on to part 2. In part 2, I'm also going to leave all of the default values in place. But, I'm going to choose a data folder. This will be the folder that this schema profile will monitor for HL7 data files that need to be imported into the database. The software will allow you to choose up to four of these folder slash file extension combinations, which, when running, it will monitor simultaneously for inbound data files. And that's all we'll do in part two. Next, we'll move on to part three and set up our HL7 listener. In part three, just like in part two, I'm going to leave the default values in place. And, 
Just so that you know, all of these default values which I am just accepting, are truly valid, and most people will never have to change them. To enable the listener just check the receive HL7 messages over TCP IP box. Then enter a valid port number in the port number field, I'm going to enter 3000, well, just because. You can always click the help button if you're not sure what values are valid in this setting. And that's it. We're done. All that we do now is click the save profile button. Since this is a brand new schema profile it will tell us that the schema tables have not been created yet, but that's okay, because that's our next step. And we're back on the main window. Here in the main window we can see that we have created our schema profile, but, if we look over in SQL Server, we can see that our database is still empty and has no tables. It's time to create our schema tables. I'll just get some more screen real estate here by clicking the left arrow toggle to hide the left menu. In the configuration program you perform most tasks from the actions menu. Just click the actions button next to your profile. If you guess that you create your schema tables by clicking the create schema tables button, you can give yourself a gold star. You click the button and then confirm that you authorize the software to make database changes. You click OK, and wait for the program to tell you the results. It says success. We can now look over in SQL Server. Refresh our tables. And there they are. Our initial schema tables have been created. And now we're ready to import some HL7 messages. Normally, if you own a professional license, Messages are imported into your database by the Schema Engine Windows services. But, since we only have a demo license, we're not allowed to install or run the Windows services. But that's okay, because we can run the profile locally. Just get to your Actions menu and click Run the Schema Locally and we're ready to start. Let me show you what I've done to prepare for this test. In our data folder I've placed 900 or so example messages, each one in a separate file. Also, I've set up our free ad hoc HL7 sender to deliver 144 messages over TCP IP to port 3000. And I click the start button to kick things off. While messages are importing I'll trigger our HL7 sender. As you can see it all works simultaneously. And we are done. Just like that, right before our eyes, we have imported over 1000 messages into our database. If we go over to SQL Server and look, we can see that as our messages were being imported, Schema Training created a half dozen or so new tables. We can select our records from our main table. And we can select records from our PID segment table. And this concludes our video the second in a series on using the core HL7 SQL schema engine. Please consider giving us a like and subscribe.